Hey, welcome back. So we'll continue building the plates in this tutorial. Just gonna right click here and see. Let's make the link. Go D to make a linked instance. And I'll just adjust the sizing of the plates slightly. It's a bit too big at the moment. Scale it down relative to the table and hit Control d a couple of times just to build up the stack feel free to arrange the table however you want it's going to move this group over here this is probably probably put one at somewhere maybe yeah at, at this section here Let's move it here. So for the plant, we'll build the the vast section first or base, however you pronounce it. Make a new layer and we'll do the usual um process. For me, I'm just gonna add a little taper and flip the Geometry around. Just let me test the origin settings slightly. So I'll just be building like a super basic bit for this. Scale the erase to function down like this. Okay, this is not going to be the most accurate scale, so you should leave grid on and off depending on um, what's your intended outcome. That depends on more or less what you're trying to build. But for me, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, not really about precision. So I'm just going to be a bit more lenient on this. On the turn off the grid, and yeah, I more or less have the what I need over here. And I'll make a linked duplicate as usual, scale this down slightly, and control D, move it to the table first. So, for the plan section, we'll be moving into VR. And we'll see you in a bit. Okay, hey, so it's time for the plan section. Instead of doing something really complicated, I'm just gonna take the kind of like this shape here and use it to build the stem of the plant. So we have this base um kind of like tapered shape towards the top. What I'll do is turn off the grid setting now. We don't need any more precision here, so we can just scope in. Use the walk tool. Set the strength to maybe somewhere around 50% for better control. And also make sure the hardness is zero. So it doesn't like create a hard crease when you're pulling. I'm just gonna demonstrate it here. So this is at zero. When you pull it, the transition is smooth. But if you max it out at 100, you'll see like you'll create this hard edge section where the, um, where you put the um, geometry from. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. Move it down towards myself. So pull it upwards. Okay, give it like a mall arc you know so it looks a bit more natural and you can see like okay we have this kind of um shape we can keep extending it and what i do is actually the thumb stick here i'll move it up or down see if i move it up it will increase the size if i move it down it will scale it and taper as i pull along so this is one trick that i kind of learned um 
from the Dolby medium base. So we have a large stem already. I'm just going to select it and scale it down. And for the radial symmetry section of it, what I'm going to do is before, before that, probably bend the stem like this. And once the shape is more or less in position, I'll actually scope out of the geometry, make a new layer. And kind of like put it into a grid first. For this, I'm just going to scope in, increase the resolution slightly. And I'll chop off the top and the bottom parts of it so I can get like a flat shape for the um, flower petal. So, do this. So, yeah, you see the, the base shape is kind of like this. And with the same technique of the warp tool, turn off this thing here. I just kind of pull it out. And taper off the thing and also give it a bit of an arc. Okay, so the base shape of the this like basic flower is formed. What you're gonna do to activate the the array setting is just really the repetition setting over here. But the tricky thing is it actually makes everything go to the origin, which I'll show in a bit. So this thing. Go to the repetition mode, and you'll see like this is the origin axis. What you have to do is move it towards the section there, and you can adjust the array count, the radio array count over here. Let's maybe give it eight, so it's dense enough, and you'll be like, all right, let's just kind of move it back to the flower, and you're like, whoa, it's just gonna split apart like that at the origin. So this is the way the origin is for, for modular so far. Everything's just going to start at the center point. And it'll take a while to get used to it. And I'm not sure if this feature is going to change down the road. It is what it is now. But the way to kind of maintain this radio symmetry and move it to another section is just this. Select the pedal, one of it, and open your actions menu and click on group. So now you can move this entire group by itself. And you can also use scale it just slightly like this. You can either move it by hand or you can use the manipulator tool that you see here. I'm just gonna move it with the tool just to give, make it a bit easier to view on VR rather than me just like bob bobbling my head constantly. So you see, you have this kind of basic shape already. And you can just scope in and just really fine tune the shape of your flower if you want to. And it will update across the board. And if you were to scope in and also bring up the, the menu over here. Not scope in, you gotta scope out of it and select it, sorry. You can still adjust the array size. So you have the flexibility to do your um, minor adjustments if you have to. And just going to select the group and just move it like this. And for the end, I'm just going to scope into the stem. Symmetry option here. What I'm just going to do is just a very basic way of sculpting. I'm just going to put the main shape and just cut into it. Like this. So yeah, you more or less have the, the plant set up. And what I'll do is I'll select the stem and the petals. Select this both, go to the actions menu and group it. So this object is now 
like this. You can actually really just move it here. But you're wondering like, all right, so isn't there like a better way other than me just like creating duplicates like this? Show you a little trick over here. There's this thing that I've learned that's called drag scoping. What it essentially means is um, you can put this entire flower into this little um, vase here. This over here is the parent of this instance. I'm just going to select this petal, I mean this flower. And once I kind of hold down the main trigger button here, I'm just going to point my joystick forward on the support arm like this. So you see like it will turn in like kind of almost invisible and also the blue highlight triggers. It means that I have dragged this entire group into this object's scope. You can see it appears in the instance now. So I can adjust the sizing of it at the parent. Create a duplicate of it. Actually, no. Let me just create a link. So this is where Modeler gets really powerful. I can create links of links within a scope and still have the flexibility to adjust the the flowers kind of like overall shape by just going into the petals um individual instance as florist so i'm just going to make it kind of sloppy like this let me give it one more And I'll scope into one of the petals and just adjust the shape, just make it a bit wider. Everything updates. This is really one of the neatest tricks of modeler that I know. So for the table, it now has this thing already. Um the tutorial will kind of stop here. Just feel free to drop comments down below and about the jack scoping options if you really have a bit of um question regarding it. It's a bit abstract, but I think with a little practice, you'll be able to get used to it. So if you kind of don't want it to be in the scope, you can also kind of select the scope into this. Select the plant that you don't want and kind of drag scope it out of it. So once it's out of this um section, this object scope, it doesn't update here anymore. This you'll be able to like move things and out, yeah, move things in and out of your objects. So with a little practice, you can move things in and out of your objects pretty easily. And the use cases like this will be um, bookshelves, kitchen counters, where you want to like move props from maybe something you modeled previously into your, your main scene. So yeah, this is how the table will look like at the end of this little tutorial. I hope you found it useful and see you in the next one.